Hi everybody and welcome to this revision video on the definition of emotion. This will be very helpful for exam revision. So let's get started. So what is emotion? The definition that you all need to remember is the following. A personal experience that involves a mixture of physiological responses, subjective feelings and expressive behaviours. So all three elements above that I've just said need to combine to form a complex pattern of bodily and mental changes associated with the experience of an emotion. So what that means is all three of these elements here need to be present in order for it to be considered an emotion in psychology. If it's just a physiological response and nothing else or nothing else is associated with it, it's not considered an emotion. So all three of these things need to be present. So let's talk about these three aspects in more detail. Let's first look at physiological responses. Physical responses is fine as well, if that's easier. So this refers to the changes in our bodies when we experience an emotion. So this includes several things. These are the main ones, though. So an increase or decrease in heart rate, a galvanic skin response, so we start to sweat, an increase or decrease in blood pressure, we may have dilated pupils, and we often have hormone releases such as adrenaline. This is what causes that shaky feeling. Now there are more that's not listed here. Crying is also a physiological response. Uh, experiencing butterflies in the stomach is also a physiological response. Anything that our body does in reaction to an emotion that's often involuntary is considered a physiological response. Next, we have subjective feelings. So this refers to the inner personal experience of an emotion, including the way in which we think about an emotion. So in other words, or to put it simply, it's the reasons why a person is experiencing or feeling that particular emotion. So we know that the term subjective means that it's subject to bias or subject to someone's opinion. So only that person knows why they're feeling the emotion of happiness or sadness, for example, it's unique to them. So what makes me happy won't necessarily make you happy. What makes me sad and cry won't necessarily make you, you know, you cry and be sad. So it's subject to that own personal interpretation and that own individual, because no two people are the same. People often interpret and process emotions slightly differently as well. Then we have the third element, which is expressive behavior. So this refers to the many outward observable expressions of behavior which communicate emotions. So the key word, as you can probably guess, is observable. We need to be able to watch it and observe it as scientists. And anything that may communicate what an emotion a person is feeling is considered an expressive behavior. So this can include facial expressions such as smiling, frowning, uh, barring our teeth and so on. Could be hand gestures, so thumbs up or other hand gestures as well. And of course our posture, so a slumped posture may indicate that a person is feeling quite shy or quite afraid, whereas a very upright posture may indicate that they're feeling confident and happy. But it needs to be something that we can observe, otherwise it's considered a physiological response or a subjective feeling. Now, it's important to mention at this point as well, that in order for us to analyze emotions or try and measure emotions accurately, we need to obviously take all three elements into account. It's not always reliable or valid to solely look at someone's behavior, for example, and then make an accurate assumption of what they may be feeling because people can lie. People can be smiling, but they may be feeling very, very sad. So their expressive behavior and their subjective feeling are at odds with one another. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, just going back a little bit, we need to look at all three elements to, as accurately as possible, assess emotion and study emotion. So physiological responses, subjective feelings, and expressive behavior. So I hope you found this video useful, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions at all, obviously you know what to do. Send me an email or come and see me in class. Otherwise, happy revising.